Okay, welcome to the next talk. This time by Nicila Puka about supporting a new Postgres version in an extension. And this was the example of the famous CIDUS extension that I'm really interesting about. So we do questions at the end. I will run around then and enjoy. Um, so, hi everyone. So, my name is Naisila and uh, I am a software engineer at Microsoft. And uh, today I will be talking about uh, some strategies and steps taken um, to support a new um, Postgres version in a Postgres extension by using uh, the Citus extension as a case study. Uh, so, me, myself, I have been working on the Citus extension for almost three years, and uh, almost half of uh, what I've worked on is uh, actually like supporting new um, Postgres major versions, so I'm actually excited to talk about this. Um, it's also my first talk at the PGConf EU. Um, not my first time in Athens, though, so um, I am from Albania, and uh, it is a country, like a little country, right above um, the upper border with Greece, and I've had the chance to come to Athens before. Um, so I hope you're all doing well, like it's a great city, and uh, this conference has also been nice so far. And I hope this talk will like be part of your nice experience here. Uh, so let me give an outline of this talk. So I will start by uh, giving the introduction to the keywords in the title. So. Uh, what are we dealing with here? So um, what uh, do uh, new major Postgres versions consist of? And in short, what, what is an extension of Postgres? And also what Citus is? Uh, and then I will talk about uh, the benefits of following the uh, Postgres release timeline. They do have a, a timeline for that, which is public and announced uh, for everyone. Uh, and then I will go uh, deeper into the actual steps of supporting the Postgres version. So like demystifying this step, uh, how, what exactly we do at Citus, like even going into the source code, how we fix bugs, like um, how we uh, overcome the obstacles uh, of supporting the new uh, Postgres version on it. So I've outlined like uh, three steps here. So successful compilation, making sure your extension works as it did before, and also making sure that uh, what uh, Postgres is bringing new like, is integrated properly with your extension. Uh, okay, so uh, as you may know, we have a major Postgres version uh, every year around uh, mid-September, sometimes going to mid-October. Uh, and uh, it has been this way, I guess, at least for the last 10 years. And like, um, Basically, whatever you do to uh, support a new Postgres version in your extension, you will have to do it every year. So that's, that's mainly the reason why this slide is here, like to remind us of that. So it's a, it's a, a task happening yearly. And um, it comes packed with new features, improvements, and bug fixes. And um, most importantly, it follows a well-defined release schedule, right, with all the release candidates and uh, uh, all the beta releases and release candidates, and this is like a good starting point uh, for us. Uh, and then, like as you all may know, Postgres is actually designed to be easily extensible, and like um, it's actually one of one of the great things about Postgres, right? So even though Postgres does offer like a gazillion things on its own, there are always the specific requirements or use cases for your business that you may want to add some things on. And Postgres, you know, just lets you do that freely. Uh, and you can, like, uh, add custom, of custom uh, functionality or, like, you can define your own UDFs or uh, optimize performance in some cases by using the hooks or um, something like that. Uh, and um, so, um, uh, However, you do this, you will have to, like most probably, take care of supporting the new Postgres version on your own. Like, um, unless there are some cases that community contributes to it because, you know, they found the extension useful for themselves as well, so they might help with some pull requests or something. Um, but you, know, you do need to have your own strategy for it to keep the extension, you know, going on. Okay, 
sorry about that. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about hooks, um, which are like particularly a bit uh, careful point to look at when supporting a new Postgres version. So as you may know, like hooks are um, uh, predefined entry points uh, in the uh, Postgres uh, server code uh, that allow you to uh, add like custom functionality uh, to specific parts of uh, the uh, server execution process without like modifying the source code of Postgres, but rather you add that source code separately. So like that's, that's where uh, the power of the hooks lies, right? Uh, and you can have those um, hooks like at the planner, at the executor, transact transaction management, the, par the, the parser of Postgres. Uh, but basically because um, you are touching uh, the internals of uh, Postgres in that case, most probably for a new Postgres major release, you will need to make sure that the hooks that you have defined are still sane, right? And uh, e extensions that use hooks um, might have like some extra work to do in that regard, and Citus is one of them. So uh, that being said, so let me introduce Citus briefly as well. Uh, it's basically distributed PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL as an extension. It adds scale out capabilities to your cluster. And um, the way it does that, uh, it, that is that uh, it distributes the, your table into these smaller chunks that we call uh, shards. Uh, and these shards will rely on different nodes, like not, not just one node. Uh, and uh, the coordinator will communicate with these worker nodes uh, to run the queries properly in the shards. Uh, Citus is uh, open source, and um, uh, Citus on Azure as a managed service is Cosmos DB for PostgreSQL. And uh, so basically you can use Citus if uh, your business needs have outgrown a single Postgres server, and uh, you can like, uh, by using multi-node Postgres, uh, you can leverage more uh, memory and more uh, CPU, IO, and uh, all that stuff. Uh, but however, like being multi-node Postgres, it has to uh, intercept uh, the Postgres planner and the parser and the executor. So it is touching many parts of Postgres. So um, uh, there is like, the basic idea here is that the more areas of Postgres that your extension is touching, most probably the more work you have to do to provide the support for the new Postgres major version. Uh, now, um, so you have your extension, right? And you have a new Postgres major version. So before you dive into the task of providing that support, you can ask some questions to, you know, to create your game plan. And the first question is, like, does it compile successfully with the new Postgres version? And uh, after that one, uh, you fix the build. So you want to look at your test suite, right? Where you, te where you are extensively testing whatever your, your extension is capable of doing. So how's the test suite doing? And how are the hooks doing? Like are they um, uh, leveraging the Postgres powers as they used to before? Or are they actually broken by some Postgres commit? And what about new Postgres features or new SQL commands? Like, uh, does your extension interfere with those? You know, could they be broken as well? And also, how many Postgres versions do you want to support, right? So you want to provide support for a new one, but do you want to drop the previous one? Or, or do you want to keep them both, or, or three of them, or four of them? So these are all things that you have to keep in mind for your extension. And uh, is your extension still relevant? So what I mean by this relevance question is, for, for example, in Citus, right, like its superpower being distributing the table, let's say that Postgres has added something when, created a, when creating a table, like a, a, another feature on it. And um, uh, so the basically, is Citus like, uh, still like, taking that feature and distributing it properly because otherwise like it will become irrelevant as Postgres goes through the years like adding more stuff into it, right? And uh, so after answering the question, these questions you can decide for yourself like 
do you need like a, a good strategy for in terms of determining your development time and resources or you can just you know open a pull request and it will fix everything for that so um, keep in mind here that a pull request might suffice. Like there are many uh, extensions that are like adding some UDFs, so they don't really uh, touch that many Postgres parts. And in order to provide the support for the new Postgres version, you are just uh, fixing some lines that are enough to go into a single pull request. And uh, there you have it, like the support for the new Postgres version. Uh, but in other cases, for more complex extensions, you will have more work to do, and therefore you have to, you know, have your plan ready about that one. So let's answer these uh, quickly on Citus. Uh, this is, these are answers for Citus pre-PG16 support. Um, so, of course, didn't compile successfully. And uh, we, um, after fixing the build, then you can actually check the test suite and everything. So in terms of the test suite, there were some tests failing and there were even some crashes. And uh, also, um, many failures on those tests were coming from, uh, like, sick uh, hooks who no longer function as they used to because something changed in the Postgres planner or executor or whatever. And um, for new PG features, like most of them do for the parts that Citus doesn't touch, but for the parts that Citus interferes with, like they don't distribute properly. And for earlier PG versions, well, yes. So typically at Citus, um, we aim to maintain support for the latest three uh, major versions. So any changes we make on the code, we have to be careful that the still like PG-15 works when you add the PG-16 support and so on. And um, in most of, for most of the things, it is still relevant, but uh, it would be good to distribute some new SQL commands as well, you know, to stay coherent with the changes. So definitely we need a strategy here. Like there's a lot of work that needs to be done for Citus to provide uh, support for a new PG major version. And uh, okay, so um, I want to go a bit deeper into the strategy now here. So there goes like it's a general tip, uh, seems cliche, you know, follow the PG release schedule, but it can really make all the difference in the world uh, when providing the support, especially in terms of timing, right? So um, it can really help your extension stay in sync with important new changes in Postgres starting from the beta releases even, like you don't need to wait for the GA version for it, right? So um, they do announce every time there's a beta release, which is, which is great, and the release candidates and so on. And um, those commits that have already gone into beta, they may be improved, they may be reverted, but it's all part of a journey. And you learn along with your extension. And then, like, there are these three steps that I mentioned in the outline. So you want to make sure your extension builds, and you want to make sure everything works as it worked before uh, the new Postgres version. So, um, but also, uh, uh, on the other side of the coin, you also want to make sure that Postgres works properly with your extension. So that you do that one afterwards. Uh, so um, for following the PG release schedule, uh, so, as I said, basically, you don't have to wait for the GA version on this one. And, um, like, um, there are some changes that are bound to happen, but, as I said, this will be uh, part of the journey. So, you actually make use of those beta releases and the release candidates, and you identify the issues with your extension early on. As, and as Postgres works on other beta releases, you can actually work on providing support for the previous beta. Because in most of the cases, like, you won't need to do a dramatic change for the next beta, right? So you've already taken care of the majority of the things on the previous beta version. So um, this can help you like be more, work in a more timely manner with your extensions needs. Um, and also, uh, uh, so I'd like to also like clarify here, this is a bit of like a beginner talks, like uh, uh, you, you have an extension and you, you like, you. Let's say you, you don't know where to start or how to efficiently provide the new Postgres support, right? And as you follow these commits, like, things may change, but you will learn with them. Like, these commits give you a good chance to look, like, when you look at Postgres commits, you are actually looking into the Postgres internals, right? Um, I, I made this presentation based on my experience uh, 
on providing the support. And ev like myself, I have learned a lot about Postgres and Citus even, the extension even, while uh, looking at these Postgres commits and trying to figure out like what broke what. So uh, it's like a win-win situation, let's say. And okay, so I'll give an example here from the PG15 timeline, like from two years ago. So this was actually quite of a roller coaster, like four beta releases to release candidates. And so what happened was that um, the SQL JSON feature and its improvements were introduced in beta one and two, and then reverted in beta four. But meanwhile, as we work with Citus on it, we actually uh, fixed what needed to be fixed for those features, and we ended up reverting our commits for those features as well. And actually, as it turns out, like these were uh, added in PG16 later on, so we looked at those reverted commits for PG16 later on. So, like, nothing really goes to waste, right? And um, uh, another thing that happened, so for the release candidate one, there was a message wording change, which I don't remember, to be honest, right now, but one of the Cytos tests were broken. A simple, like, sentence change, but still, even one test being broken, like it doesn't allow for, uh, you know, preparing the packages and all that stuff. Uh, so we changed that one. And even after the second release candidate, there was a new function introduced, uh, uh, like the replication slot name, and we had the same function inside this as well. So um, we had to rename it to like replication slot name for node and owner. It was already using node and owner as parameters anyway, in order to, um, um, provide the support with PG 15.0. However, though, um, the only thing that we needed to do uh, after the GA was released was this rename, right? Uh, compared to, you know, just fixing everything after the GA release. So um, this really was helpful in terms of providing the support like within one week, uh, a couple of days after the uh, GA release. And a small example from the PG 16 timeline as well. So. Uh, I want to show here, like, uh, as we merged changes uh, for providing support, we use, like, different uh, releases. So, for example, for uh, compatibility, for successful build, we were using beta tool, right? But as we progressed, uh, we actually merged the regression test sanity changes with beta 3. And actually, we merged the RC1, uh, like, new features, um, after that one. So we use like beta two, beta three, and RC1 in three different uh, like bigger commits to provide the support. So this like may happen and it's, it's totally fine. It's just like, it just means that you followed the timeline and you are well in sync with what's been going on with those commits. And then, so successful compilation, it's actually pretty straightforward. So you are uh, in Citus, um, like, um, we need to uh, make sure that it compiles. We have to update the configure script to actually allow for this version. And um, then, like, as you get adders, you fix them one by one. Uh, and for example, most of the adders are coming from the fact that some variables no longer exist or most probably have been replaced. Uh, an example from PG15 here with the value node structure. So it was removed in PG15 and it was replaced by the separate node types that it was encapsulating, in fact. So we made changes in Citus accordingly. And another thing that usually happens is that the function signature changes. And uh, I also an example from PG15 here about the relation create storage function. Uh, so uh, it basically uh, was uh, getting three arguments in PG15 instead of two uh, prior to that one. Uh, so what we did in Citus is that uh, for, uh, we defined this compat function uh, that would behave differently based on the Postgres version. And this is actually quite useful. Uh, it is readable for the uh, developer in the code. And uh, whenever you see, like, you know that there is like, okay, so we have a compat function here. It means that it's behaving a bit differently between, uh, uh, to, with, between different Postgres versions. And it, it is also very helpful when you want to drop support for an old version or when you want to add for a new one. So we, we do make use of these compat functions. And you know, uh, quite as simple as that one. And uh, now about uh, the next step. So extension sanity, I would say it's the most important part of this process because usually it requires the most substantial changes. 
And um, once you fix this, you do actually have something that works, like you have a beta, right? So um, you have something you have something that works with the new Postgres release, so you can use that as ground zero and you can work from that. Uh, so um, it's different from successful build, like just, you know, all this problem in the book for programmers, like just because it compiles doesn't mean that it runs as you intend it to. So most probably you should update your internal logic um, accordingly, based on, you know, what Postgres might have touched that uh, have broken um, ex your extension logic. And uh, so, um, I, I mean, uh, this step came uh, while working for Citus, but like it's easily, you can easily look through the lens of it for any extension, right? Uh, so, uh, I want to give like, this is a bit of a more technical example. Uh, so, diving like straight into the source code. Uh, it's an example with the Citus planner hook, so I mentioned hooks in the beginning, so Citus uses a planner hook, and it was broken with PG16, so I'll just show why with a, a simple example, a one-line fix. So here I have like the uh, code from Postgres actually regarding the planner, so as you see here, um, if you have a planner hook, uh, Postgres will go through that one, otherwise it will use its own standard planner. So in Citus, we do have a planner hook called the distributed planner. So um, it's actually quite technical part of Citus, and we recently had uh, the Citus technical documentation addition to the uh, open source uh, repository of Citus on GitHub. Uh, it was like uh, compiled by two of the most like uh, prominent seniors and engin senior engineers of Citus. Like, and I can say like it's truly a gem. I, my, myself, I refer to it every time I run into like some planner stuff or executor stuff that I, that I don't understand what's going on in the Citus code base because it's quite huge. Uh, and also for understanding the planner, going through the technical documentation of Citus is, like, I would say, one of the best ways. So that's also what I did for um, understanding this issue. And okay, so we have the distributed planner, right? So Postgres. Uh, we'll see the hook and we'll call that one instead of the standard planner. And um, uh, the distributed planner uh, on its own, like for optimization purposes, does follow different routes based on the input query. And the example I want to show here is about the fast path planner. So um, this planner is what we follow if we have a query that we'll, we know will go to a single chart of a single table. So remember like Citus divides your uh, table into these smaller chunks called shards that reside in the worker nodes. So we have, if we have a query that we know the result of it will go to a single shard in a worker node, then that query will go through this planner, fast path planner. So the reason is that uh, they, there's a way to make this faster. <laughs> um, so, the aim of this planner, as it says in the technical documentation, is to avoid calling the standard planner of Postgres because we do not need any cost estimation or whatever for that query prior to the distribution of the query, right? So in the planner, we just want to make sure we are distributing the query correctly. So we just, we just skip that one and we don't need anything that the standard planner may give us. Uh, so. Um, uh, so it says here that it has significant, perform significant performance for OLTP workloads, which in general are tar targeting a single shard. Uh, now, so we have the fast, pla fast path planner. So we want to know what broke that planner, right? So we, we had an instance of that planner breaking and the query breaking. So it was actually this commit from Postgres uh, which reworks query relation permission checking. It is working on the Postgres internals and it aims to um, uh, make the executor faster. Now, note that this commit doesn't appear on the release notes at all because it's not like a user-facing change. It is something internal, right? So you cannot find these kind of issues by looking at the release notes of the new Postgres major version. You have to actually run your tests, like try stuff and uh, you know, debug what caused the issue. 
So it was this uh, commit, right? And uh, shortly what this commit is doing, so uh, previously when you wanted to check permissions uh, in a query, so they are stored in the range table entries. So range table entries um, here corresponding to tables and the executor would scan the entire range table entry list and uh, it would actually skip the uh, inheritance children, but it would, ha it would actually pass over them and skip them in the process. And in case of like many children, this would become like a bit of an overhead. So instead what uh, this commit does is that it changes the planned statement structure, so it adds a flat list uh, of uh, permission infos that actually need to be checked. So it just goes through those and none of the inheritance children are there at the beginning, right? Uh, and to make it quick to find like which permission info belongs to which table, we add, like uh, they added, uh, uh, a, a new entry to the range table entry structure called this uh, index, like, um, let me look at this, permission info index here, okay? So um, in this way basically, the in the execution process, we don't go through all the inheritance children, okay? So that's why Postgres did this. But it modified a couple of structures. <laughs> uh, so there's a new entry in the plan statement struct, which Citus is heavily using. And it is the perm infos entry here, which uh, has the nodes for uh, the R tables that need one, okay? Which includes the inheritance, this uh, doesn't include the inheritance children. And there's also a new entry in the range table entry struct, um, this perm info index. Also, Citus is heavily using these while doing the planner, uh, in the planner hooks that it has. Uh, so let's look at the failure we uh, faced by running the test. So we create a table, right, with an ID and a name, and uh, we insert uh, into, into this regular Postgres table um, the name Be'ana, okay? And afterwards, uh, by using like Citus' signature function, we distribute this table, okay? And now we want to insert again. So uh, we want to insert this name, Erida. So what happens is we got this error. So it says that there's an invalid perm info index one in the RTE. So, you know, what happened here? So we know that looking at the query, so we have inserted the test table. So there's just a single table here. So the range table entry for this one, we know that it will have the perm info index as one. So perm info index is fine. But what it means is that the planned statement is not fine. So there is a planned statement struct somewhere which is missing the perm infos list. And that's why we have this invalid perm info index here because there is nothing that that perm info index can refer to. And uh, it's indeed the case. So somewhere along the fast path router planner, uh, we have this generate placeholder plant statement, or so the structure plant statement here. And we were, use, we were creating like this, uh, we were generating this plant statement from, for, from scratch. And we give all the necessary entries, but we didn't have the perm infos. So here I added this if def, so if we have a version um, uh, more than 16, we should, make, we should take care of the perm infos as well and we copy them from the input query uh, here. And this is the line needed to fix that issue and then uh, it inserted just fine. So remember like um, the planner had a, a bunch of different ways, right, to go about the query. This is just the fast path planner issues. So this actually came up in all of the paths that the Citus planner hook goes through. And we had to fix all of them. So, um, so you identified the bug, you found a way to fix it, and now you want to commit, right? But you want to make it in a way that uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's clean and neat and you can refer to it later on, understand what you have done, and uh, maybe uh, you are working in sync with another developer who's looking at other Postgres commits. So you want to make the commit description uh, useful here. So you don't just, you know, fix this or something. Uh, so you first you find the uh, Postgres commit that broke the logic, and then 
uh, after fixing the logic, you put a reference to that, like uh, we put a reference to that commit uh, and uh, in the commit description. Uh, so basically, um, uh, here, everywhere that uh, we set the queries or plan statements uh, range table list, we also need to set the perme infos accordingly. And we give the link to the relevant PG commit. And then we commit this one and uh, we are done with it and it works. So, um, the, so the question is how do you find all the broken pieces, right? Um, well, in Citus, we make extensive use of the test suite for that one. So hopefully you do have a nice and thorough test suite. Uh, and to keep track of everything, so you run the test suite, identify everything that's broken, and uh, we use GitHub issues, like a very nice way to do that. Uh, so, for example, we open this issue, encapsulate it, what remains to be fixed, and as you can see here, for example, in the multi-node test schedule, at some point there were 12 out of 175 tests failing, and so on. And we also, uh, in the issue, uh, give the specific failure as well, right? Give some uh, information about it. Uh, because like developers may want to pick those up and fix those, you know, and then let, uh, let the others know that they have fixed that part and they have merged that commit. Okay, so here are like just some examples here that we got uh, in the test failures. Okay. Okay, um, so you can even be more proactive with this one. Um, so you can actually build and run tests of your extension regularly in the rel xx stable branch of Postgres. Uh, so um, this like really is help. You don't even wait for the beta releases, right? You just you know, follow them commit by commit. And in this case, you would have to fix build issues instantly because you want to build regularly. However, you can fix the test issues instantly or document them for later. Uh, so, um, you, like, if there's a way to automate this one, it would be great. We don't currently have this automated in Citus, but it is something that I have been thinking on, like, after working on two years on this one, like, it could be helpful, um, depending on the, uh, the amount of changes that need to be done. And uh, last but not least, so, um, the Postgres new features integration. So the previous step was to make sure that the extension continues working properly. Now this step is to make sure that whatever Postgres new has added as new, like when you create your extension on it, like it's not breaking anything, right? Like it, it's functioning as it should. And for these ones, you can use the release notes uh, because uh, they are not like, even if like they would involve internal changes, but they are also user facing changes. So you can identify these more easily. And you can make use of the feature metrics, like no uh, be in sync, like what was added into what. Uh, waiting for Postgres uh, XX block, like it's one of my favorites. Uh, and um, also like the PGpedia nodes, they were quite useful, especially for the PG16 support from last year. So just some resources, there are other ones. Um, but uh, yeah, so you got your resources and you found, like you identified what could go wrong. So as far as your extension is concerned, you can divide what Postgres has added into two categories, right? The things that just work with your extension because your extension is not touching anything in those parts, okay? And the rest, like the rest that would need development in your extension uh, to make sure that they work properly. So uh, most probably, uh, the first list has the majority of the things and the second list is smaller, right? Because uh, it's an extension after all. You're not fixing the whole Postgres. So let's look at this in terms of Citus, okay? So the majority of the things just work with Citus. So because these shards, uh, you, you look at them as shard from the coordinator node, but as far as the worker node is concerned, a shard is a regular Postgres table. So as soon as you send the query to it, it will execute as a regular Postgres query. So whatever Postgres improved for that query, it will reflect directly while running in the shards. So like, I don't know, performance improvements on query, index constraint improvements, etc. And also, 
considering that CITUS does not interfere with replication, vacuum, log logging, monitoring, etc., uh, any, any improvement in these areas is also reflecting, like what these areas do inside of them, okay? Um, so uh, you also don't need to, like if you identify these parts of your extension, you can make sure that, okay, these parts are fine with Postgres and my extension as well. Then you look at the stuff that do need uh, work, right? Uh, so um, for CITUS, uh, basically what needs work are the SQL interface changes. Uh, and the reason is that CITUS needs to learn how to properly uh, send these to the worker nodes, okay? Uh, how to distribute them properly, okay? And um, sometimes the syntax of a command is expanded. So the example I gave earlier, let's say when you create the table, you have added something new there, and you also need to, uh, as you distribute your table, you need to add that new feature to each of the shards, right? Or a new command is introduced altogether, like with PG15, uh, uh, the um, uh, merge command, right? So it was uh, new altogether, so you need to learn, we, Citus needed to learn how to distribute the merge command, and maybe other new functions or data types added, et cetera. And uh, so you have a list of these things, and you want to decide what to do based on your resources, okay? So, for CITUS, we, we had like three options. So first option, the, beauty, the most beautiful one, is like we extend the code base to support the new stuff, right? Uh, so basically this is like, mean, it means adding new features in CITUS uh, that are new in Postgres as well. And it's the ideal case, right? Because uh, CITUS's aim as an extension is to like seamlessly distribute Postgres. So the goal is to actually like distribute as many things as possible, right? Like whatever command you run, it's like seamlessly distributed. But of course, like uh, doing all of that work, like it, uh, it like requires a substantial amount of um, resources, right? So you you want to uh, prioritize what you want to add now, what you want, and what you want to save for future work. And the next option is actually you extend the testing. So there are some features that um, they work with CITUS, but they might need maintenance in the future, uh, or they are partially working with CITUS, and you, you add some tests like to make sure that they continue like partially working in the same way, okay? And, um, and the third option is like you don't support it now, but you print meaningful error messages for that unsupported stuff, or maybe not errors, but warnings, like you don't like decept uh, the, um, command altogether, but you give a warning for it. Like a warning that it's not uh, distributed, like it's not supported for distribution, something like that, based on CITUS. Uh, so yeah, we track this with yet another GitHub issue, and yeah, so as you notice here, for PG16, the GitHub issue is actually now using RC1, because as uh, providing support, like the RC1 release, uh, we had the RC1 release, so we changed everything to that one. And yeah, so let's give some examples here as well, quickly, with PG16. Uh, so um, we decided to extend the code base to support new stuff for these things here. So for example, when you create a collation, there was this new rules option added, so we added that rules option as well. We are already distributing the create collation command. And uh, you know, I don't know, like the explain command, there is a generic plan option, so you add that one as well. And, uh, and the list goes on and on. These are just some of them. And um, when you extend the testing for like what I mentioned, like features that uh, currently work with CITUS, like maybe completely or in a kind of limited fashion, and they might need maintenance. So for example, uh, publication with schema and table of the same schema. So this is like uh, another way of writing the create publication command. However, it's not adding uh, SQL syntax to the create publication command, right? It's just allowing other uh, inputs to it. So we, we were already distributing the create publication command. So since there is no new syntax added, no need for further development. But we did add some tests with it, you know, just in case for, like, we also know what CITUS can do. 
to writing these tests, but also like just in case in the future something changes, we are prepared for it, like the test will just catch it immediately, right? And another example is the create database. So prior to PG-16 support, like we weren't distributing this uh, command, but there was this rules option added to it. So what we did, like uh, we were partially supporting it in a sense that we were giving the user a workaround to uh, uh, like create the database both in the coordinator and the worker nodes. So now we fix that workaround by adding some tests and we um, uh, like we, we make sure that the user is like uh, uh, also um, running the same command in the worker nodes with the rules option. And then, uh, lastly, like we may decide to leave some new features for future development. Uh, so, keep in mind that uh, although it seems like the easiest thing to do, uh, it also requires some development of, on your part because. Uh, you, you want to figure out all the different paths that you may run into this. So it's not just always one command, right? So you want to figure out all the different paths and add something at your code, like print a, another message or a warning or whatever goes with the situation in order to uh, not have any unexpected behavior with your extension. And so an example here is the grant with inherit and set. So uh, at first, we were just printing some warning messages that we don't propagate these commands. Uh, and that's how we provided the PG-16 support. However, like in the following um, patch release of Citus, we uh, actually provided that support. Like we uh, uh, propagated the grant with inherit and grant with set. So also keep in mind that just because you don't support it now, like doesn't mean you never will. Like you put, you, you may put it as part of your f future uh, work and you work on it whenever um, it, is, it becomes prioritized based on your extensions like business needs or whatever. And lastly, I want to talk about the PG-17 progress on CITUS. Uh, so um, we have the successful build changes merged uh, into it and uh, we are currently working on the extension sanity, right? And we have opened that issue since beta two, and we have the um, uh, where we keep track of which which tests are currently failing and need and need to make changes for it. And given that the extension sanity is not finished yet, uh, we have not started implementing new features yet. However, we have set to track uh, stuff in this uh, other uh, issue as well here. Uh, and um, the plan for uh, uh, PG-17, so um, uh, PG-17 full support on Citus is uh, by the end of 2024, so um, we expect to add the support uh, by this time. And uh, yeah, so with that, like, I want to give a last revisit to the strategy. So um, you, uh, uh, you can, hopefully apply this strategy to other extensions which are like complex like Citus and the sub steps as well, right? But new things may come up with your extension, but you do want to have a, a game plan and you do want to follow the Postgres release schedule to stay in sync with the changes that need to be made. So you, uh, it, it should build successfully. Uh, your extension should do the same things as it did before and also Postgres, the new version, should work properly with your extension as well. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, with that, like, I want to thank you all for your attention and uh, any questions you have are welcome. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, questions, great talk. Hi, great talk, thank you for this. Uh, I want to ask you about extension development, uh, not just not si just Citus. Uh, I'm I'm starting as a extension development for fun, like uh, it's not my main job, and I want to make sure that uh, whatever extensions I develop, they they have less maintenance headache for me. <laughs> so if you have any tips, like uh, don't touch these hooks or something <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah, don't touch these hooks. But if you don't touch the hooks, like you cannot really extend, uh, right? Uh, so um, 
when I started working on Cytos, so it was already ready, right? So I didn't actually have any part on uh, developing the hooks or like uh, being aware of not touching anything. Um, but um, I would say that, first of all, like um, there is a, uh, there was a great, I think it was done at this PG conf conference like in 2019 or maybe another of the Postgres conferences uh, by like two of my former colleagues like Burak Yujisoy and Ander Kalajas, like they did a training on how to write Postgres extensions. So I would recommend, bef um, if you are doing for fun, that's fine, but when you actually start thinking about maintenance issues, you have gone to the next level, right? Like you are thinking, okay, so this may be something more than fun. So you might want you, you know, to step up your game and actually go into it uh, uh, like more than just fun, you, you train yourself better, right? And uh, in that talk, they do mention like what you can touch that, um, it will be like the cleanest touch ever, you know, like you may still have to provide support, but it will not become messy, mm -hmm. okay? So I can send you that link afterwards. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, uh, and uh, af after that, you have to make decisions based on what you, what you want to play with in your extension, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe it doesn't need to use the hooks. Um, as I said, there are many extensions. So other than Citus, for example, I have provided support for the top N extension uh, developed by Furkan, also a former colleague of, colleague of mine. So uh, the top N basically adds some UDFs uh, that help you like get the top N things out of the list. Very nice extension. And uh, for that one, like a simple pull request was fine to provide the Postgres support. So um, uh, you, you don't always need to think of the best strategy, right? But I guess uh, PG stat statements or post-GIS, they are probably using hooks. So for those ones, maybe more substantial work is needed, like it may be similar to Cytos. So yeah, I guess, um, I hope like I was able to give some pointers. Uh, yeah, but, thank you. Uh, my experience is also falls a bit short on this lane as well, but uh, training is best, I would say. Hi, thank you for the great talk. Uh, my question is uh, more general to PostgreSQL and your opinion from like an extension developer perspective. Uh, do you think that with uh, how brittle things, how hooks are, and those internal data structures that you may end up using and they may end up changing in PostgreSQL, uh, do you think that there is a lack of some stable interface between extensions and PostgreSQL itself? Can you repeat like the last sentence. So, uh, so do you think that there's a lack of a stable interface between extensions and PostgreSQL so that you don't find out about those changes last minute when the release is out? Oh, I see. Uh, so you mean, is it possible to miss something huge? Uh, so I, I'm asking, do you think that, that there should be a stable interface, like a contract between PostgreSQL engine and oh. extension developers on oh, what's the API? See. Um, so, um, to be honest on that regard, so, um, Postgres does a lot of its development keeping extensions in mind, okay? So I have noticed this. So there are a lot of commits, like where the comment says, so, uh, like blah, 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 this is doing this, and this also allows for plugins to do this and this and this. So, um, Postgres already, I guess it's doing the best it can to be easily extensible. And of course, being easily extensible, it, it includes in the name that it should also be easily maintainable, right? Uh, so um, uh, it's not that Postgres disregards that part. Um, so regarding, for example, the planner hook, that uh, example that I gave, I would say that it would be good, like if, like, uh, these, these central structures are not changed often, but to be honest, they are not changed often. So in this case, it was kind of a major improvement, like skipping all the inheritance children, which can be in thousands, as you know. So they, had, they, they did that one, they decided it was worth. But as you know, like before a commit goes into Postgres, like the discussion is so long and they do, they do wanna make sure it's really worth it. So they don't just change structures that you know, are gonna mess up with your extension. Um, but given like, um, I'm also like new in the field, 
uh, maybe like after I've worked some more years in this, I might come up with some, I don't know, talk with some Postgres guys and say, okay, so Citus is touching this and this, there might be other extensions doing this, so is it possible that you can also keep this in mind while you develop such that our maintenance work also decreases? It might happen, right? But um, it really, like, it depends a lot on, on what you're trying to do with your extension. And in most of the cases, you're not, like, touching the whole of Postgres. So uh, you, it's a term, um, you have to decide on the priorities, I would say. Like, uh, yeah. Thank you. Officially, we are out of time, and I'm a German guy, so I'm taking this serious. Uh, but you can came in front, but the break is now starting. So thanks again.